Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. In this video, I'll talk about the dentine pulp complex and I'll talk about some of the key or the foundation level concepts. So watch this video till the end. So the session I outline. In this session, I'll be briefly talking about what is dentine, the composition of dentine. It includes both the organic and the inorganic components. I'll also talk about the physical properties of dentine. So dentine is a heart tissue portion of the dentine pulp complex and why we call it as dentine pulp complex because during tooth development the dental papilla cells they differentiate into odontoblast and those odontoblasts they will differentiate and they will form the dentine and the dental papilla is now called as dental pulp so in short the embryologically both the dentine and the pulp they are interrelated and that's why due to the same embryological origin we call it as dentine pulp complex so this is a picture or a drawing of an anterior tooth from the proximal aspect so the dentine in the crown portion it is covered by enamel and in the root portion the dentine it is covered by a thin layer of cementum so this brown color it indicates cementum Dentine is avascular and it forms the bulk of the tooth. So dentine, it do not have any blood vessels. So the tissue fluid, it provides nutrition to this avascular dentine. And the major bulk of the tooth is formed by dentine. So if you compare it with enamel and with the cementum, the main part of the tooth or the main bulk of the tooth, both in the crown and the root, it is formed by dentine. Dentine in the crown portion, the dentine it supports the enamel because the enamel it, it is brittle as compared to the dentine, which compensate for the brittleness of enamel and prevent the enamel from fracture. The dentine has tubules that transverse the entire thickness of the dent of the dentine. So this is basically a crown section. Of a posterior tooth or we call it as premolar so it is a premolar tooth and a ground section of a premolar so these are the tubules that transverse the entire thickness of the dentine because of these tubules uh, there is sensitivity to the tooth structure the dentine is a sensitive tissue because of presence of these tubules in addition to that uh, in the living uh, living tooth there are odontoblasts that lines the entire outer surface of the dental pulp and their cell processes are the odontoblast cell processes they are going inside these tubules so these odontoblast cells that are the formative cells of the dentine they have a potential to repair the dentine in case of any uh, trauma to the tooth structure in addition to that there are stem cells within the living tooth so those stem cells, they have a potential to differentiate into new odontoblast. So it is a sensitive tissue and it is capable, the dentine, it is capable of repair. Now the composition of dentine. The dentine, it is basically composed of inorganic component, means mineral component and the mineral component is around 70%. The organic component means the protein component, it is around 20% and the water, it comprises of around 10 percent now the enamel and dentine on radiograph based on the composition like the mineral and the organic component how the enamel and dentine especially the dentine it appears on the radiograph so this is a periopical radiograph that is showing the maxillary permanent central incisors this is one central incisor and this is another central incisor and part of the lateral incisors they are also visible so if you see the dentine, this is the dentine and this outer portion is the enamel. So enamel, it is more, it appear more white in color or in other term, it appears more radio opaque. Why it appears more white? Because it has more inorganic component. It has, it is 96% mineralized or 95 to 96% mineralized as compared to the dentine, which is 70% mineralized. 
So that's why it appear the dentine, it appear more radiolucent or more light gray in color as compared to the enamel which appear white in color. Now the inorganic component, the inorganic component that is 70% is basically it is made up of hydroxyapatite. And hydroxyapatite is basically calcium and phosphate which, which is hydrated. This hydroxyapatite structure is not pure. There are some substitution like carbonate is there, magnesium and fluoride is there in, in the hydroxyapatite structure. Now the organic component. The organic component, it is 90% of the organic component. It is type 1 collagen fibers. Other type of collagen fibers are there, for example, type 3, type 5, and type 2, but they are present in smaller quantity. So the main collagen, uh, main type of collagen is collagen type 1 in the structure of the dentine. There are some known collagenous proteins as well, and those known collagenous proteins, they include dentino, dentine phosphoprotein, dentine saloprotein, dentine glycoproteins, and these other proteins as well. This, these proteins have a role in inhibition as a promoter or as a stabilizer of the mineralization process. The organic component of dentine has similarities with the bone, for example, in terms of collagen in the bone, also type 1 collagen is present. And known collagenous protein like osteonectin, osteopontin, and proteoglycans, they are also present in the organic component of bone. So what are the physical properties of dentine? So dentine is yellowish white in color and this color it contributes to the uh, to the appearance of tooth as the enamel it is translucent. So it is yellowish white in color and the enamel it is translucent. So the color of the dentine it has an effect on the appearance uh, on the color of the tooth. Dentine it is slightly harder than bone but softer than enamel. Dentine, it has an elastic uh, quality and it prevents the fracture or the crack propagation through the enamel into the dentine because the, the crystals of the dentine, they are smaller in size and because of the presence of collagen fibers. So the dentine, it basically prevents crack propagation and it absorbs the forces uh, on the enamel. The dentine and enamel, they are firmly bounded at the dentino enamel junction. So this is a picture showing a molar tooth. So this is enamel and this is dentine. So this junction is known as the dentino enamel junction. So these two different tissues, they are bounded firmly at this junction called the dentino enamel junction. So let me show you on a histological image. So this is the picture of, this is a histological image of the dentino enamel junction, for example, this one. So this dentino enamel junction, it is not straight if you observe. So it has a scalloped pattern or it has, it do not have a straight pattern. So it basically, it increases the surface area. So both these tissues, and due to increase in the surface area, these two tissues, they are firmly interlocked with each other. In the root surface, in the root surface, this is cementum and this is dentine. So this junction is, so this junction is known as cementodentinal junction. In the cementodentinal junction, that is a junction between cementum and dentine. This pattern is not present. In fact, both of these, uh, both of the tissues, the cementum and the dentine, they are straight. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, please give me your feedback in form of comment and also do ask questions in the comments. Again, thank you very much for your attention.